welcome to Would I Lie to You, the show with fantastical fibs and tantalising truths. And on David Mitchell's team tonight, the news presenter whose accent has been described as sexy and like warm honey, or put another way, Welsh. Hugh Edwards! <laughs> And the star of the Sarah Millican television programme. I'll keep you in suspense no longer. It's Sarah Millican! <laughs> and on Lee Max team tonight, an actress who can convince you of anything. She told me earlier she's delighted to be on Lee's team. It's <laughs> Josie Lawrence! <laughs> and a comedian, actor and former professional footballer who used to play with the likes of Beckham, Lineker and Shearer. And if Bert Beckham, Arthur Lineker and Frank Shearer are watching, he says hi. It's Bradley Walsh! <laughs> so, uh, we begin with round one, Home Truths, where our panellists read out a statement from the card in front of them. To make things harder, they've never seen the card before, so they've no idea what they'll be faced with. It's up to the opposing team to sort the fact from the fiction, and Sarah is first up. Sarah. When I'm feeling tired, I photograph myself to see how tired I look. <laughs> I then compare this photograph with other photographs I've taken of myself when I felt tired to see how tired I really am. <laughs> Please, team, what do you think? When, when did this begin, Sarah? Um, uh, probably three or four years ago. How? Uh, boredom. <laughs> <laughs> the first time you did it, what brought that on? I think I was just taking photos of things in the flat and then thought I'd take a photo of myself. And when you say tired, do you feel like your eyes are or just a little bit tired? Well, it depends. It can depend. Sometimes I'm a little bit tired, sometimes I'm really, really tired. If you're wearing glasses and taking photographs, of course, that will disguise the tiredness in your eyes. Do you want to take them off to... now? Or... Yes. yes, please okay. do, yeah. Just do a pretend well, she looks one very for tired, us, Sarah. Yeah. That's it, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> to be fair, she looks that. absolutely you look, knackered. You, look, yeah. you do look. Do that face again. Would you, what would you give yourself from one to ten? If one is not I very tired... I can't see it, that's why I take the four off. <laughs> <laughs> when you look at these pictures, how do they make you feel? Well, sometimes, if I think I'm really tired and I take a photo of myself and then I compare it with another much earlier tired one that yeah. seems to be more tired, <laughs> then I feel better. Do you ever do while you're asleep? Do you go? <laughs> I'm not realise you've done it. No, I eat a lot in the night, but I've never taken a photo. <laughs> not as you're sleeping, though, Sarah, surely. No, but I... I... You're not shoveling it in from the bedside table as you sleep. No, but I do wake up in the morning with less biscuits than I thought I had. <laughs> so what are you going to say, Lee? Is this the truth or has she made it up? I think it's true, but... Josie I... thinks it's true. I think she's lying. Uh, I think it's a lie because I don't think Sarah's, A, that ridiculous, or B, that vain. Well, we're in trouble if it's true, then, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> so, Lee, what are you going to say? I'll say... I'll go with Josie, say it's true. You're going to say it's true? Mm. Right. Sarah, was it the truth or was it a lie? It was true. Ah, very good. Well, right, right. Yeah. Very good. And the exciting <laughs> thing is, not only is it true, we have the evidence. Take a look at this. <laughs> <laughs> now, Sarah, how do you rate? How do you rate that one? It, that's it... a good seven out of ten. <laughs> You know, that's been a hell of a day, hasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go on now to snap week. number two. <laughs> now, that is... That's different, cos that's happy tired. Can you see? Can you see happy that it's happy tired? tired? Yeah. yeah. Let's have a look at number three. <laughs> 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 were you on a drip there? Were you, were, you, were you being kept alive in that one? That is the worst one. I couldn't even be bothered to hide my bra strap. <laughs> Yes, it's true. Sarah does photograph herself to see how tired she looks. I'm terrible after a late night. You know, some mornings I barely recognise the old man looking back at me in the mirror or remember why I invited him home in the first place. <laughs> right. Hugh, you're next. I have an evil eye that I use on my colleagues during broadcasts when I want them to move on. Now, when you say your colleagues, who in particular? Cos don't you read the news on your own? It's a very lonely job. 
You mean correspondents, don't you? Colleagues who might be correspondents. Nick Robinson, for example. Oh, I see. Oh, oh, I see. Robert, Robert Robinson. Peston, for oh, example. Yeah. People who've come in to drone on about something endlessly. <laughs> All right, well, look, Lee, I'll tell you what. You, what? you be a correspondent. I'll be a correspondent. Okay. So I'm and told, then so... you do yeah. your evil eye. You mentioned Robert Peston. Going on and on about, you know, the world coming to an end. I've got to <laughs> stop him talking. Right. Lee. In news today, in news today, we believe that there's a chance that the... Uh, oh, oh, my God! <laughs> That's it. <laughs> do it again. You've got to start again. I, I can't mean, do it well, in silence. Like today the ice caps were melting once again and we found That's that... That's not what a correspondent no, says. The true. correspondent doesn't say in it's the news realistic. today. You've got to talk about the euro. Oh, I'm sorry, David. Talk I... about the euro. I'm sorry, I didn't realise I was going to have to be method. Talk, talk about the euro and do it with some level of insight. For You've right. got to say... I will. I will. Today. Today? Why today? today? Yes. All right, then, about, tomorrow. We're now going to our economics correspondent. Today? Why are you saying today? All right, then. Today. All right, then, forget it. Tomorrow, do you know what I heard? <laughs> that the Europe... Oh, oh, ah! yeah. <laughs> It is good. <laughs> David can't see it. Do it to David. Are, David. Do it to David. There are gradations on right. it, OK? David, David, wait. Do it properly. Pretend yeah. you're a sports okay. correspondent. <laughs> <laughs> you're talking about yeah. the Carling Cup final last yeah. year. Yeah. David. Okay. Today. Not today. <laughs> not today. <laughs> today. No, not today. Today in the football, once again, they were kicking it. Oh, God. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it does work. Yeah. It yeah. does work. Some of them are very, very resistant to it. You're the BBC version of Medusa, are you not? I have to stop these people. They have to be stopped. <laughs> you said there are gradations. That's right, Rob. So, OK, so let's see minor irritation. Yeah. You see that? Well, it's barely noticeable. Well, exactly. That's a nervous twitch, sure. No, it's not. <laughs> OK, medium, medium. That's good. I yeah. like that. Yeah. OK, and then full on. <laughs> Down. I mean, if I angle the head down, that is serious. I suppose yeah, the problem is, that really is. I was going to say, if you're really not interested, yeah. you raise both eyebrows, but no. it's, it's going to backfire, isn't it? No, gonna... there's a different one I use. Go. He's, he's <laughs> fascinated <laughs> by this. Yes, that's <laughs> wow, this is interesting. <laughs> there's always the turn your back on them technique, which I have used as well, Ooh. but Robert Peston still carries on. <laughs> you don't really turn oh, I have done. Yeah. Um, basically, he's so Rob, you're now Robert Peston. Yeah. So you've got to say quantitative easing. Say quantitative that. easing, you know, will it work? It's hard to say, Hugh. And at the end of the day, we won't know until Tuesday when the Chancellor is going to give us his report. Now, word is that that report is going to contain many of the ingredients that we've already seen. But until it's released, we won't know. And don't forget that there's always the opportunity for the Shadow Chancellor to put forward his proposal. We won't know until Wednesday. Why Wednesday, you ask? Well, Wednesday is the day when the report will be presented. Our business editor, Rob Brydon. Thank you very much, Thank you very much. So, what do we think? What do we think? Do you think it's true? Lie. Is it lie, lie, lie. Is it lie? Lie. He's too lovely. He really is. He's, he's like a big, old, cuddly Welsh old. bear. <laughs> I mean old in the loveliest sense, rather oh. than in the old sense. <laughs> Uh, lie. You think it's a lie? Why, why lie, Bradley? Why lie? Because you can. No, I mean, why do you think oh, this is a lie? <laughs> <laughs> He's a very uh, solitary person on television. I see oh. Hugh in my living room. He's on his own. He's never given me the evil eye. So, <laughs> truth or lie? Lie. OK, my teeth say lie. You say it's a lie. Hugh, was it the truth or was it a lie? You should know that I am programmed by the BBC to tell the truth. Oh! <laughs> wow. Yes, it's true. Different news presenters have their own little techniques. Fiona Bruce will incline her head to one side. Emily Maitlis will cough. And Jeremy Paxman will grab you by the lapels and tell you to <laughs> shut it or he'll glass you. <laughs> uh, Bradley, you're next. Oh, OK. Here we go. Whilst fulfilling a lifelong dream of swimming with dolphins, I had to punch one of them on the nose because I firmly believed it was trying to remove my trunks. <laughs> David. Um, <coughs> where and when? Florida. When? <laughs> 2005. 2005. Yes. What was this dolphin doing? You're swimming along. I've, I've never <laughs> swum with dolphins. He's getting off on this. No. <laughs> I've never swum with Yeah, I want, a, I want a, a, a rousing as possible, <laughs> a blow-by-blow, blow, if it came to that, <laughs> account of 
what this particular saucy bottlenose did around your trunks. OK, um... <laughs> <laughs> because I have nightmares about so it. I'm <laughs> I have flashbacks, flashbacks. Um, you have to hold on to the dolphins' uh, fins like this and they propel you across the water, so you, you're in tandem with dolphins. Is so it in the sea? Well, it was like a sea world place. Right. And, and I was being propelled across the water or dragged across the water by these dolphins. Holding anyway, them by the dorsal fins. Indeed. Yeah. Uh, I got to the other side of the, uh, the tank that we were in and one swam left and the other one came round and um, was p poking me in the back. And so, consequently, I, the, the, the lady um, who the was lady there... The lady dolphin. Not the lady dolphin, <laughs> no. The, you know the, the instructor lady? She said, just shoo him away. So I, tried, I went, oh, but shoo, shoo. <laughs> and, I, and it wouldn't go. And all of a sudden, it actually ran its, its nose down the back, down like the, the, the... I've got a crevice in my spine, right the way down, and my trunks started to go south, well, at which point... you've got a crevice in your spine, you're not getting mixed up with the bottom, are you? <laughs> As I turned round, I went like that and caught the dolphin right on the nose, and it startled the dolphin, and the dolphin swam off. You've been back to SeaWorld, then, in the meantime? Yes, I've been back, yeah. And swimming with dolphins again? After well, that rosy I, experience? I went with a, I went with a, uh, a charity. What had then... happened to you? Did you have an illness? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. I... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. So what are you just... thinking, David? What are you, which what way are you, are you thinking? Uh, it's pervy and a bit creepy, isn't it? But, I, <laughs> but, it's, <laughs> but it's perfectly never, believable. Never mind the other two on your team. What do you think? Believable. <laughs> it's perfectly believable. <laughs> it's perfectly believable. I didn't believe it at all to start with, and now I believe it a bit. But it is disgusting. It's sort of... <laughs> it's so disgusting. I think he seems yeah, quite no. ashamed of it, which makes yeah. me think it might be true. He's a good-looking fella. I can see, you know, what they were thinking. <laughs> <laughs> we it's think it's true. I the think team it's true. are in yeah. agreement. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Bradley Walsh, <laughs> were you telling us the truth or was it a lie? <sighs> Rob Brydon, it is a total lie. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> Yes, it's a lie. Uh, Bradley didn't punch a dolphin on the nose because he believed it was trying to remove his trunks. <laughs> the next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. Now, this week, each of Lee's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest, and it's up to David's team to spot who's telling the truth. So please welcome this week's special guest, Paul. <laughs> Right, uh, Bradley, what is Paul to you? Um, uh, this is Paul, my school friend, who loved mashed potato so much that I used to steal it off teachers' plates for him. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Josie, how do you know Paul? This is Paul, and he taught me the carrot technique for giving up smoking. <laughs> Finally, Lee, your relationship to Paul? This is my milkman, Paul. I came down one morning to find he'd left 88 pints of milk <laughs> on my door. <laughs> <laughs> so, there we are. Uh, Bradley's Mr Potato Head, Josie's Carrot Counselor, or Lee's Mixed Up Milkman. David, where do you start? Mash all right, mashed potato. Why did you see it as your role to obtain mashed potato for Paul? <laughs> <laughs> because uh, he loved mashed potato so much and I was his friend and he wasn't brave enough. How did you steal it without the teachers noticing? <laughs> I stole it uh, the, when the teachers weren't looking. <laughs> how many teachers did you steal mashed potato from and on how many separate occasions? Describe the scale and nature of the scam. <laughs> Five years I've had this. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, what happened was the um, teachers' dinners had mashed potato on them, 
Did, 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 were the pupils allowed no mashed potatoes? <laughs> was mashed potato the luxury item available only to teachers? No, not necessarily. Um, not necessarily? No, no not necessarily. <laughs> Some days. It, uh, yes. Some days we would have mashed potato. I, I had a very privileged upbringing where mashed potato was available to teachers and pupils alike. <laughs> not a day goes by when I don't give thanks for that. <laughs> Some days we had no mashed potato. And, um, <laughs> Paul. Paul? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, how come I never get a newsreader? <laughs> <laughs> we would have lunch in the dining area. Mm. The teachers that were looking after us in that dining area would then swap over and have their lunch later than us. Right. The plates of dinner that were going to the other teachers had mash on them and... <laughs> Somewhere else in the school, other than the dining room, we'd take the mash. Right. <laughs> Just sum up for us how you got the mashed potato off the teacher's plate and onto Paul's plate. I, hi well, I hijacked the canteen trolley thing. <laughs> On a trolley, so it's an industrial quantity of mash you're moving around here, yeah? <laughs> yeah? Is that right? <laughs> Would you like to move on with your inquiries? Josie, what is the carrot method? Paul is my plumber. Yeah. And is I've known him for about ten years now. I do like a cheeky ciggy every now and then. About two months ago, he came and did a, a tap in my utility room. <laughs> and I said, Paul, when I gave him a cup of tea, you know, you can have a fag in this house. And he says, I don't do it anymore, but I'll show you what I do do. And he had a packet of ciggies. Yeah. With a little plastic bag thing and little sticks of carrots, and he nibbled them. Oh, so you, I so did you it. don't smoke the carrots. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> so it's just quite simply, every time you fancy a cigarette, just yes, nibble on that, a carrot. But for some reason, because I've tried before, for some reason, just having the packet with you. So you put them in the cigarette yes, pack. So you still have that's to buy. That's what he did. That was his little technique. I was trying to give up heroin once, and I carried around a little tub of uh, hummus. <laughs> <laughs> I found that worked. <laughs> right, what about Lee's Lee. story? Yes, so when was this? It was about six weeks ago. 88 bottles, glass bottles. Glass bottles of milk, yes. Mm. And how were they arranged on the, on the doorstep? In the shape of a cow. What does that matter? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to picture the scene. Where oh, were yeah. they? Picture Where the were they? Right. I've opened the door, there's 88 bottles of milk. Where were they? Where were they? On the doorstep, around the doorstep. Not just on the doorstep. Very big doorstep. Well, you've got to let me finish. On the doorstep, around the doorstep, around the side, up the uh, up the bit that I have on the side of my house. And the colour of the foil on the milk bottles? The colour of the foil? Yeah. Blue. Blue? Which means what? <laughs> it means that it's full fat. I didn't think anybody drank full fat milk is anymore. Is this the bit you least believe... The, the bit that you doubt about this story is I had 88 I'm... bottles of milk on my doorstep. That's fine, that's champion. Full fat? <laughs> Are you bombers? How many had you ordered? I'd ordered... Well, I thought I'd ordered eight. You thought you'd ordered? That's a lot. Eight, eight pints of full fat milk. Well, that's it. <laughs> Why did you want eight pints of full fat milk? Because I, I had friends staying over. Who like oh. milkshakes? <laughs> I ordered it online, I made a mistake, I meant to put 88 bottles, and I hit it and I put 88 in the box. That's right. what happened. And, the... and Paul didn't question that at all. Nobody questioned that you wanted 88 bottles of milk. Yeah, because what happened is I put 88, I said double clicked, and then his face just came up on the screen and went, Are you sure, Governor? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on, Lee. 88 bottles of milk? What are you talking about? Hey? <laughs> I'll go back there and have another go. <laughs> <laughs> no, he doesn't get involved in the admin, he just looks at the list and delivers well, the milk. Fair enough. Okay. When does Paul deliver? Uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. What time? Ooh, it's quite early, Hugh. So, how, how many bottles did you say? 88, 88 on this particular and occasion. And he did it silently on the doorstep? You didn't wake up at all? <laughs> yeah, no big clanking going on? <laughs> got a very back and forth and back and forth to the milk float? <laughs> no? It was in, he's, got, he's, oh. a, he's a professional. Yeah. He's, we call him the Ninja Milkman. <laughs> OK. <laughs> talk, talk us through the event. You open the front door, what happens? I say 88 <laughs> bottles of milk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And what happened then? I went, what happened? I went, love! <laughs> Not to him, obviously he's gone. Yeah. <laughs> I said, uh, darling. Because I was saying, love, that'd be far too working class and northern. <laughs> darling, heavens above, the milkman's left 88 bottles of milk again. <laughs> what an absolute blackguard. 
How long did it take you to get through this supply? Until you got rid of them all? And what did we, you do We then? didn't get through them all before they'd gone off. Uh, we gave some to the cat. Actually, I'm lucky because I've got a lion. Um... <laughs> OK, we need an answer. So, uh, David's team, is Paul Bradley's Mr Potato Head, Josie's Carrot Counselor, or Lee's Mixed Up Milkman? I don't understand why you'd have full fat in this day and age. No, no. Think of I, your half flower. I get semi-skimmed. I get semi-skimmed. <laughs> yeah, I get semi-skimmed. I think everyone yeah, gets semi-skimmed. Everybody semi -skimmed. gets semi-skimmed. Semi-skimmed, yes. Mm. I think it's Bradley. <laughs> it was Bradley. No, yeah. I think you might be right. It was so yeah. bad. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was, was so bad. bad. It's mm. got to be right. Bradley's technique to basically collapse in front of us meant yeah. we didn't really get any information yeah. either way no, out of no, it. He's true. just... True. And he has, he has a whiff of a thief about him as well, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. OK, so, Paul, would you please reveal your true identity? Well, I'm Paul, and uh, Bradley used to steal with Hikers <laughs> Thank you very much, Paul. Thank you very much. <laughs> Which brings us to our final round, Quickfire Lives. And we start with... <coughs> Lee. I can tell if someone drinks mainly tea or coffee just by listening to their stomach. <laughs> right, David's team, what yeah. do you think? Lee. How? Ha how? Yes, how? Uh, yeah, how? Well, there's a certain rumble to your coffee drinker. Oh, come on. It is the slightest thing that only someone with a sensitive ear like mine would Can hear. you reproduce the rumble yourself? What do you say? Can you reproduce the <laughs> rumble yourself? <laughs> got him. The eyebrows got up. Uh, <laughs> oh, sorry, Hugh, what was the question? I said, can you reproduce the rumble in some kind of form? Give us a sense of whether it's resonant or a bit of a squeaky rumble. I'd what say, kind of rumble is it? I would say that the drinkers of coffee have a have a rumble that I can only describe as imagine a small fish passing wind. <laughs> <laughs> but you've got a stethoscope to the glass. Yeah. It's a just it's the mildest of rumbles, and as I say, only a, a trained ear would hear. And where is the tea drinkers rumble? <laughs> Much I mean, but hardly ever. Hardly ever. I mean it, it's it's to do with the Well they rumble less, the tea drinkers. The tea drinkers <laughs> are less of a rumble than the coffee drinkers. Because I'm a tea drinker and I rumble loads. Good job, you don't drink coffee, you'd be all over the place. Really? <laughs> But surely it's, they're both the same amount of liquid, so mm. I don't understand why it's Well, I'm different. glad you asked me that, sir. It's finally a sensible question. Yes. It's You're to welcome. do, apparently, with... <laughs> <laughs> it's not the actual... I, and I genuinely don't know what it is, but it's to do with something that's in coffee. You. It's something that's in coffee that's not in tea. And it, oh. is, and it is in coffee! <laughs> right. It, it, it's my party trick, so I'll say, do you want tea or coffee? Then I'll go, in fact, don't tell me. And I'll get down on my knee, <laughs> I'll lean in like that, and uh, I'll go... I'm guessing coffee. Could you do that to Bradley or Josie and say which they prefer? Why don't I do it to you, David? Because I think that's what you want. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, some physical contact I know, between I know, us. I'm... Let's just get this out of I'm the way. I'm desperate to get your ear on my bare skin. <laughs> but no. Do it, do, do it to, to Josie. No, Josie. I want to do it to you. <laughs> It's a will-they-won't-they they panel game. <laughs> and finally, it comes to this. <laughs> I could do it to everybody. You're going to do us all? Pop <laughs> OK. <laughs> oh, news just in. <laughs> There's a definite rumble there. You're a yeah. tea drinker. I thought you said coffee drinkers rumble more. There's a rumble, but it's not it's the a, rumble. It's, not it's the, the mild <laughs> rumble. <Yeah. laughs> that was oh, lovely. You know, that was really lovely. Do you know what? I, I can't make my mind up. I'll have to check again. <laughs> A very warm ear. <laughs> it's tea. Now, I have a different system for the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Do you mind if I. Not at all. Press my I'll lift to... them up so you can get in. <laughs> she promised you'll keep them up till I'm away. No, no, I'm going to them on Don't your head. Don't stop them on top. I do not want to be forced to the ground. I'm going to put them on your head. <laughs> Dunk. <laughs> 
interesting one because you've got a bit of both. So it's almost as if they're... It's like you don't drink tea or coffee. I'm getting from you. OK. I'm getting you don't drink tea or coffee. I'm getting you drink tea. I'm getting you drink tea. So that's that's what I would say. So you now know whether it's true or a lie. Hugh, do you now, drink Now, what we need to know is, did he get those There's right? no sense on what these rumbles actually sound like. I need to sort of get a sound. OK, yeah. I'll, I'll try and do the sound. David, David, as a tea drinker, was the mild rumble. Mm. A sort of... David, are you a, are you a tea drinker? Is you I, I am a tea drinker. But no I... way! How did I do it? <laughs> well, I Can you confirm to the audience that we've never met? I think Lee probably got it by listening to the rumbles of my stomach, or he might have got it from my saying I'm a tea drinker several moments before. <laughs> one or the other. So, Could have been you know, that. I don't, you, yeah. you never know with this kind of weird thing. Well, what about you, who? I'm not saying you, who. What about <laughs> what about you, who? It's a very <laughs> complex picture with me. Yeah. And, you know, it's tea and coffee, yeah, but, but it it's depends mainly tea. on the time of it's day. It's mainly tea with you. Don't lie to me, Hugh. Have you had a coffee? No, have you had tea this evening, though, Hugh? Or have you had coffee? What have you had? Be honest. I know I've had, had tea. tea. Well, there you yeah. are, you see. Yeah, what about Sarah? He knows Sarah. what he's doing. Brilliant. Even the audience are clapping now. I'm loving this. Yeah. <laughs> now, with me, you said it was I don't... either one or the other. No, coffee. I said yeah. you're not yeah. really a big tea, a big or, tea or coffee drinker, but occasionally you'll have a tea. I drink a lot of tea. No, you don't. But to be fair, I've got... To you be don't. fair, I've got a lot of underwear on as well, so that might have. Ah, oh, no, it doesn't work with underwear. I didn't say yeah. that it doesn't work with the underwear. But you should have said I would have taken it off. Yeah, that was like. <laughs> what about the noise of the coffee then? The coffee rumble is a, a lot more like a. <laughs> 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 ah, that's the only way to describe it. I mean, I can't make the noise of a... Of a... <laughs> Can I suggest that that would be a better party trick? Don't call my, my, my skill a trick, Sarah. Mm. It's, uh, I find it a curse. I've had to live with it all my life. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think, David? What do you think here? I'm trained to spot liars a mile off. That's yeah. my job. And something I can do with a kind of unerring sort of sense of certainty. Why are we losing that? It's it's <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it's, um, it's not working tonight. <laughs> right, right, right. On this one, I just think it's it's unlikely, isn't it? And however much fun it was to thwack one of my boobs on his head, um, I still think it's a lie. That was just one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So what are you going to say then, David? I think we're going to say it's a lie. You think it's a lie? Yeah. Okay. Lee, was that the truth or were you lying? It is, in fact, true. No, it's not, it's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's a lie. Uh, Lee can't tell if someone drinks mainly tea or coffee just by listening to their stomach. <laughs> oh, that noise signals time is up. It's the end of the show. I can reveal that David's team have won by three points to two. But it's not just a team game, and my individual liar of the week this week is Hugh Edwards. <laughs> yes, Hugh Edwards, who's been less genuine than an email from a Nigerian billionaire. Good night. <laughs>Buck, you've got to get him out of there. William Shatner's in control of Have I Got News For You. Next, then Glasgow's Kevin Bridges joins Michael McIntyre in Glasgow. Well, we've all got to save on petrol. That's at 9.30.